eating when you're eating ribeye. Cutting around this. Everybody loves that, but this flap is where there's a lot of rich flavor. Turn this around, I'm gonna show you. There you go. Now, there, there's a beautiful clean ribeye. This is where the cracking of meat comes in. So we're gonna put this back, and with the uh, aid of modern technology, the meat glue or transglutamine, we're gonna glue that back together. This is not contraband, but this is the latest craze in food technology, all the rage among chefs and master butchers. This is a live enzyme, Japanese product, and this basically, where proteins come in contact with each other, they will, they will bind together. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a liberal amount on here, like salt. Food safe. Food safe. Put the flap back. What you have now is you've created the cleanest, most tender rib, ribeye, and therefore Delmonico or ribeye steaks. You and your guests will be amazed at the lack of fat and sin you left on the plate. Very powerful. That's a very powerful statement right there. And you know me, you can't do anything without finishing by tying it up. To hold this in place so that overnight it glues together, exquisite, excellent. Old fashioned cut of beef with modern technology. So these are, these are the ribeyes now, cut into Delmonico's. As you can see, the cap is nice and melded to the eye of the rib. We cut them like this and present them like this in the market. What I want to do now is cook one and show you how tender and delicious this is. So I'll make a little slat with the knife, I'll push a little garlic in. I want to make sure it's thin enough so you're not biting into such a strong flavor. A little sliver right there. Remember what I said, steaks, hot and quick. You want medium rare. I'm not gonna move that steak for five minutes. I'm not even gonna check on it. I'm just gonna let it simmer, sear, seed and sear in that hot oil. Like I said, the ribeye wants to curl, it tends to curl. So I'm gonna brick it a little bit. As you can see, it's gonna hold it down flat till it creates its ectoskeleton in order to keep its flat shape. All right, so you think it's cooked too much. Feel that. You can hear if it's cooking too much. You can hear, you don't even need to look I'm at it. I'm not looking at it, you can hear it. You, you can hear. I'm not gonna move that steak for five minutes. Five. You can hear your what, what, are, what are you hearing? You're hearing over time. I'm not even gonna check it. I'm not even gonna check it. I'm hearing time. So you can hear time. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm let it simmer, sear, seed, and sear in that hot oil. You can hear time. You can hear time. And uh, what I, heard, you mean I heard too is, much of it. What you mean is, <laughs> is you heard it cooking for a long time. That's what, and, That's you, and you were smushing it with a brick. I don't know what you were we were keeping the steak flat. The, the ribeye tends to curl up, okay. right? You yeah. See that, how it's all together? No sinew in there, no fat eye, no gristle. That's a wonderful steak. Uh, all right, maybe I heard wrong then. I guess I heard wrong. All the way through, every bite, every morsel, tender and juicy. Look at this. Through and through. A little bit of garlic there. That's meat crafting right there. That's delicious steak at its best. Crafted at its best. So, a little bit of the old, a little bit of the new to create a wonderful steak experience. Are we gonna eat some of it? Mmm. Mmm. Delicious sweet meat.
I'm Jamie Stokowski, the Georgetown Butcher. And today we're talking about another cut of prime beef. One that divides us. Either you love it or not. But for me, it's the big daddy of roast beef. Regina, you're looking for a large rib. I'm looking for uh, double rib, prime rib. You're looking for two, 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 bones. two bones. You're looking yeah. for two bones. Two bones. That's, that's a really rather big size. Manly, just a very large piece of meat. You know, listen. At butcher shops across America, beef is still king. And at Stokowski's, the Georgetown Butcher, it's no different. I'm actually quite inexperienced in all of this. I still haven't really figured it out yet. I don't know if I always am aware of which one I'm getting. I, you know, uh, listen, you, you know. Everybody wants a bone, I though. gotcha. Like, nobody wants to be screwed out of it. No, <laughs> everybody, of everybody, bone. right, no, no, you're right. Everybody wants a bone. But you're killing me here, you know? A doll like you, I gotta know. What, 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 what is she gonna do with a piece of meat like that? I wanna cook it low and slow. I'm used to doing all of this in the oven and I just bought a slow cooker. My plan is to slow roast, so I bought a slow cooker. Right, you know, as we know, a, a, you know, fat, that's the key ingredient, keeping it nice and moist instead of dry. Uh, put it at 225. Okay. Put okay. it at 225. 225. And I That's guess it's good. Take like 30 minutes a pound. Okay. That might and be a little more than I a little more than I would do 30 minutes a pound. I would do 20 minutes a pound. But okay. go ahead, I'm following you. So I want it to get to 100 degrees. That's correct. For myself. Okay. I'm gonna take it out, let it rest for like 20 minutes until it gets to 110. And then once, once it's at 110, I'm gonna put it in a 400 degree oven. I wanna put it back in the oven to develop that nice, crusty deliciousness. <laughs> right? I gotta tell you, you know what you're doing. I do, okay. You know what All you're right. doing. Okay, That's exactly good. the way you should cook okay. that. Right. That's a really sophisticated method of cooking right there. All you right. know that? She knows what she's doing. That's right. That's the new cooking method. Slowly bring it up to temp and then finish it high. Completely opposite, completely different, otherworldly than the way we used to cook steaks and roasts. You're, you're spot on with this. <laughs> Oh, I just love ribeyes because they have so much fat in them. And it's also the main flavor carrying agent. That's yeah. why it, with prime beef, you're looking for the intermuscular marbling. Oh, they just got so much flavor from that fat, that layer that r runs around them. These delicious primes are grain fed. You're gonna be hard pressed to get this level of prime beef in a grass-fed animal. Yeah. Right. Now this is a black Angus that is used, okay? Yeah. And it, it is fed a very specific diet in order for it to get the high marble yeah. that it gets. As much fat as possible. That's, that's it, you know, for tenderness, right. for tenderness and flavor. Okay, so you want me to cut a two rib, yeah. standing rib roast. Yes, exactly. That's right. that's right, that's right. Well, let's get to it. Oh my God, that's a big piece of meat. Let's do it. Over at the butcher's table. Here we go, look at that, that's a beautiful rib. But you know something, Here, here's a great, this is great. Let's look at the marbling there. Look at that, look at all that beautiful marbling. You see what I'm talking about? All these white veins, that's intermuscular fat right there. That's what's gonna give this piece of meat that rich flavor and that tenderness, all right? There's, the, there's one bone, there's two bones, so I'm gonna go right on this side of that bone. What's the difference between that and over there? Okay, this side here, this is the eye. This is the gem. This is, this is the heart of the rib. This side is up towards the shoulder. This is the shoulder end where the muscle, the eye, 
of that rib, the ribeye starts to break down into a couple of different muscles. Okay. All right, this is still delectable, but this is obviously the choice piece right here. You know, you might say, is there a difference in price from this sure. side to this side, huh? <laughs> right? You're gonna lean on your butcher and you're gonna say, hey, you know, give me this price, this side price, but I want the, I want the fat eye, all right? Since you're a special customer here, we're gonna, we're gonna go right here, huh? You are gonna get just a really gorgeous piece of meat right here. Now, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna trim a little bit of fat off for you, okay? So we're gonna go up here behind the bone, along the inside. Yep, we're gonna take that off for you, all right? I wanna expose the bone just a little bit, just so it looks fancy. So when you go to cut it, you'll have a couple of, a couple of bones to look at, a couple of French bones. I just want a couple of these little, little points of this rib to show. There you go, look at that. Okay. So you're gonna stand it up like this, okay? But I wanna serve it bone on. You okay. wanna serve it bone on? Just go right down the middle. All right. Just right down the middle, you won't hit nothing. Look at that. Okay. Right down the middle like that, open it up and present it like that on the plate. You'll be all set. It just wouldn't be a Stokowski piece of meat without, without it being tied up. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go like this, a little bit. This is gonna help hold it, you know, so it's so it stands nice and tall. Okay. So, Regina, I, I just gotta be very, really frank and honest with you. I'm very impressed. You know, I really appreciate you taking time to do this with us, okay? Hey, there it is, right? Yeah, pick that up. Smile, smile, let them know that you're... Everything is fantastic here. It's really, really good beef.